Vacation buys. Third and final box. Hello and welcome back to RC Icons. So in this video, we've got the final vacation buys box. I'm going to have to put my foot in my mouth in this video. That's right. You'll see and you'll understand when I show you. Let's get into it. All right, I'm ready to put my foot in my mouth. Let's do it. Oh, why do I do this to myself? I'm actually really excited for this box. As every box. You're gonna have to deal with a little bit of story time. Sorry for the noise. Holy smokes. All right, I'm gonna get right into it with bodies because I've got five of them sitting in front of me here. <laughs> we'll just bang one at a time. Now these should all be F1. Doesn't mean they are, but they should be. That's at least what I'm remembering. So again, uh, I said this in the last video, these were all from the same seller on Bai, and I got caught up in it. Um, so he had like 12 body kits, all F1 for sale at, at auction, and some of them were doubles. So I ended up buying the same body twice. I can't remember which one it is, but there is two of the same in here. I would be bidding on the first one that came up and I would think, you know, hey, it went too high and I would throw a bid in on the second one. Well, somehow I bid on two that were current auctions and won them both. McLaren MP4-24. Now, like I said in the last video with the Sauber C12, my intention with the bodies is to get a bunch of F-103 chassis or whatever chassis I need and build the cars. So this one literally comes with like six or seven different body pieces um, and then all the plastics and wings and driver's head. This is a newer age one. 2010 so this one's not necessarily a vintage one so this might go on like an f104 pro or something i'm not sure yet what i'll what chassis i'll put it on but it's probably going to be more of a modern day f1 chassis and i believe this might even be the one i ended up buying twice so maybe i'll build the car and then give away an extra body set as part of the As part of the build process. That one's different. This one the same. This one might be the other one. McLaren MP4-24. Yeah, so this is the one I bought two of. So again, it's more of a modern day F1. Being from 2010. But somehow I ended up buying both that he had for sale. <laughs> <laughs> um, these were going a little bit higher than I would have liked. I think they were all hovering around $50, $60 a piece. Which isn't horrible, but when you end up with five of them, exact same thing on the inside. You know, you're at $250 in bodies. And then you still got to go buy whatever, five chassis. So that's the first two... Next one, again, probably a modern day one. It's the Ferrari F60. I do have vintage ones here, I promise. Um, Ferrari F60. Body set. Plastics, 
plastics, nose guard, nose cone. This is the same thing where it's got five, essentially five body pieces that go along with the car. This body looks like it's been somewhat cut out. Yeah, because there's pieces here for it. And then there's your Ferrari F60 decal sheet. And if I don't ever get around to building these and whatever, I've got a collection of F1 bodies, I guess. Because I've got a ton of them. I've got the Ford Benetton, the Sommer C12. I've got a couple other ones. Um, I've got the Lotus 107B. <laughs> Last thing I need to do is cut myself. I already shot my finger with a nail gun today, so I don't need to be cutting my finger right now. In enough pain as it is. I wish I could say it was a finished gun, but it wasn't. It was a framing gun. <laughs> I just barely came through the 2x4 and ba bang Bounced right off the, uh, the bone, but it went in a good half inch. So the Lotus 107B... Ford is the Loctite, Castro Loctite car. And this goes back to, uh, I don't know if there's a date on it. It's an F103 chassis car. The date would be on the decals for sure. No, no protective film. Obviously being a vintage one. 1993. So this may be in the first 100. Five, no, 58126. Here's your decal set there. So your Loctite Castro livery car. Oh, that goes in the, full, the Ferrari. Before I get confused with body parts here. Um, you guys know why I bought that one. It says Ford on the box, so I had to buy it. And then there's the blue oval is in the decals, so when it's actually built, you see that it's a Ford. Even if you would like just to display these with the bodies in them, just super, super cool. At least in my book. The next one, and I think this is the last body set, but there's an F1 kit in here that I'm looking at right now, is the Ferrari... And this is a must-have, at least for my collection. So I have the Kyosho McLaren MP5-4, which is the Marlboro car. Uh, I don't need two of those. I keep looking at the Tamiya ones that are available, but I have the Kyosho one. Now, Kyosho also did the Ferrari F189 as well as Tamiya, but I don't have that kit. And I think the 189 is just as important for an early car as the McLaren Marlboro livery car. Uh, I love the body lines of this one, how wide it is. Um, this one is 1990, and it is in the first 100, 58084. Everything is in here to do up the car. I may even have a 189 already body set, um, but it was kind of, it wasn't a full body kit like this. So I'm not sure if I have everything that I needed to put the body together and put it on an F103 chassis, but now I do. And I believe this one goes on an F103. It should say it here. Is it an F-103? It'll say it in the directions, but yeah, so... Uh, it doesn't say it on this box, but usually it does. So 1990, so that's an early, early one. It says it's the late version, so they I think they did an early version and a late version of that car, but whatever, it's fine. Uh, set of tires... Not really sure what tires they are. Oh, these are Kyosho wheels. This should be a couple sets. 
I bought a couple sets of vintage Kyosho wheels and tires. So these are obviously the, uh, I believe, I believe these are the Turbo Optima three-piece wheels. You can see the screws on the inside. Um, I don't believe they're the Turbo Optima tires, although they are uh, a square sp spike, and I know that that's a rare tire, and they're all in perfect shape, like brand new. So I know I know there's two sets in this box, and there's another set coming in another box. Uh, Kyosho manual that I didn't have already, and I have this car to restore, so I figured I would grab the manual. It's like six dollars for an original manual. I thought that was cheap enough. I don't usually buy manuals, but if it's a car that I'm going to restore and it's cheap enough, then I will. I will. Uh, buy it come on Ultima Pro so the green and white one I just showed you may have seen the video already I just did an Ultima family video um, where I showed my Ultima Pro I have a new chassis for it, new body, original decals, um, wheels and tires. Now I have the manual to do that restoration as well. Another set of vintage Kyosho wheels and tires. So these are original... Optima mid that needs some peroxide. <laughs> Sorry, uh, original Optima mid. Uh, I'm not really sure why I bought these. To be completely honest, I may have just kind of gotten caught up in the moment. These are another square square spike tire. That none of the tires are cracked or perished. Um, they're not glued, so I can get them off. It looks like it's got the OT sixty sixes. Say it on there? Doesn't. Um, these look like the original OT66s. These were some other kind of square spike. Um, may have just gotten caught up in the moment, but I was looking at a bunch of original wheels and tires from Kyosho and ended up buying three sets, which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. This, oh, I know what these are. <laughs> so TF1, TF2, TF3. All Kyosho touring cars. I've showed two SP9, two speeds for the TF2 that I was going to use on the TF2 and the TF3 that I have. And then my TF1 actually came with a two speed on it already. And that is on uh, Optima. The TF1 is an Optima mid chassis. So these came up. And they were way cheaper than the first two that I bought. So I ended up buying them both. One of them, they're two speed shift changers. Brand new. Just like the other ones that I have. Oh, one of my... Uh, that's going to be a newer one. Driver's head fell out of one of those boxes. I'll have to figure out which one. So I bought another one for the TF2. This is the one you can see it right here, TF2. I already have two brand new ones. Um, but I bought a third uh, so that I would have some replacement parts if I needed it. And then I want to play with the two speeds. Um, not only on the touring cars, but like my... Excuse me, my uh, I'm just looking at the pinion. Yeah, it is a two piece dual pinion. Um, the TF1 is on a mid chassis. I want to try to put one of those on a re re mid just for fun. This one came up. I didn't even know. I thought the TF2 two speed was the only one that they did. 
it's not so this is a two-speed shift changer for the spider four-wheel drive this is also for the spider four-wheel drive but this one is more specific and it says it's for a tf2 where this one it may be all the same parts i'm not sure and this is just an earlier version before the tf2 came out so it just says for the spider but both came from the same seller um they might they might be identical parts although the pinions look different so this one is definitely sporting bigger pinions than this one is. I don't know if you can see those pinions in there. Um, so it just gives me options. So at this point I have five Kyosho two speeds. Um, four of which, or at least three are exactly the same. The one that's on, the, I'm pointing at it, the TF1 may be that earlier one, I'm not sure. I'd have to look at the pinions to be able to tell. I think we're down to two kits here so vintage kit this one's kind of a funny story uh i wasn't planning on winning this <laughs> i was caught up at work i was working and i had put a low bid in on this kit and i was winning up to one minute left to go the only reason not the only reason it's a cool ass kit but i I'm an equipment guy, and this says Komatsu. <laughs> That's really the only thing that drew me to the car. I was winning at $170 with a minute left, and then it got bid up. So I bid the guy. I figured oh, I'll go up to 200 So I put a bid in right away. Every time you bid, it adds time. Guts down to one minute, got bid up. So I realized that whoever it was was waiting till there was like a minute left and then he would bid me up and add five minutes. So then I, I got annoyed with him. So then I was like, well, screw it. I'm going to wait till there's a minute left and then I'm going to bid him up. One bid, whatever it was, two bucks. We went back and forth like that for over an hour, just bidding each other up. Wait four minutes. He would bid. It would add five minutes. Wait four minutes. I would bid him up. He would wait four minutes. One minute left. He would bid me up. So I was hoping he would see that I was doing what he was doing and he would just stop. But he just kept going. So I kept going. And before you know it, I think I was up $257 for the kit from $170, which isn't horrible. Um, for one of the first 100 new in box, I mean, I, I'll take it, but it wasn't my intention to spend 250 I think, $7 on this particular kit. 58095. So it's the Lotus 102B Judd, and it's got Komatsu decals. <laughs> um, it's a wicked nice kit. It's got full blister pack presentation just like they all did back then so i'm happy to have it but it's not i didn't buy it because i wanted this particular kit i bought it because i got caught up in an auction bidding war and i'm not going to say that i lost because i won um i just don't know how great of a deal it was i'm happy to have it to be completely honest now that it's in my hands it's awesome um, I don't know how many, I want to build all of my F1s, but the kits look so good too that I may not end up building all of them. I may end up keeping some of them just as kits. So we'll have to see. The other one that I want is the Lotus Camel livery car. The yellow Camel. I think it's the 107 maybe. I can't remember. I want that car as well and i've bid on a few new unbox kits and they went for like 171 and i wouldn't go any higher on those but i paid 257 for this one so i don't there's no real thought process behind it i guess it just comes down to the day all right you ready for me to open my mouth and insert foot it was only last week in real time probably five or six weeks ago when you see this video that i did the happy 60th kyosho video where i'm talking about the 360th anniversary cars and then at the end of that video in the closing i went off on a tangent and i was talking about the 870c riri 
and how it was too expensive. First, I was talking, I was bashing Kyo, uh, Yokomo because it was 600 pound in the UK or 500 pound in the UK, which is essentially 600 US minimum, it might even be more. And then I realized that my local hobby shop had them for 467, I think. 467. So it wasn't a $600 car from Yokomo. It, that's what it costs you if you live in the UK. Because unfortunately, all of you guys in the UK, who I love you to death, but you get pounded by your government with import tax and handling fees and everything else. So a car that to the US is $467 or $457. By the time you put all of your jargon in there from your government, yes, you are over 500 pounds which to me is absolutely insane. Um, but that's where you live and that's what you have to deal with. Even at $457, for me, I have an original new in box kit and I have an original built, never run, still needs to be painted. I would not buy that car um, unless I got a really good deal on it. <laughs> so I did get a really good deal on it I actually bought this at the time for Jason at JRB Motorcycle because I know he wants this car he just can't afford to buy this car at the moment which is fine not everybody can afford everything day one So I bought this because it was a great deal. I didn't want to lose the deal and watch him pay for something later. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to buy it. It's very different from the original. It's very different from the original. Hold on one second. I apologize. That box is very different. I wasn't planning on doing this in this video, but that's an original, and that's the Riri, and this is almost cartoonish in the wheel and tires, whereas this looks more like a drawing. You can see a driver figure in there. I mean, a picture. You can see a driver figure in there. I didn't realize how different the boxes were. And I'm glad that they are, because as close as they are, they are still very, very different, especially the car, the look of the car. Even the body looks different down below. It's hard, it, it would probably be really hard for you guys to see it on camera, how different it looks, but it looks extremely different. Um, getting back to the story... I didn't want to not buy this car at the price that it was being offered and then have Jason pay 460 bucks for it six months from now. So I bought it and I was like, look, if you decide you want one, you can have the one that I bought for the price that I bought it. And if you don't end up coming up with the money and you can't buy the car, then that's fine. I'll just keep it. It wasn't a big deal. So four fifty seven locally in my hobby shop. You go on A Main or anywhere else that's offering the car, roughly the same price, right around four fifty to four sixty. I had this in my hands here for three eighty. So it was an $80 savings after it was shipped. I think I paid somewhere around $330 for the car, the kit, from Bayi. That was out the door after the fees. So I'm watching the auction for this thing, and it stalled at $325. And I was like, well, that's a Bayi bargain. I'm like, but I really don't want that car. I don't need it. I don't know that I would run an $870. They're... they're a somewhat fragile car uh, and I explained this in other videos I have a 94 runner that would be my runner car so I really don't didn't have a reason for having the car and spending money on it 
So I bought this essentially for Jason. If he didn't want it, whatever, I've got one of Yokomo's first Riri's. Now, time goes on. It's been weeks since this box and the other boxes have come in. I just haven't had time to film. And now I, I'm watching everybody do their videos on them. And I really do want one. So I was like, well, I don't want to buy another one. I almost did buy another one on Bayou. One just sold this weekend and it was the same thing. $331 it sold for at auction. So by the time, if that was a U.S. guy and he shipped this, just this kit, you're talking probably 70 bucks to get this to the U.S. Uh, if it was just this kit. If it's in an, a consolidation box, it's probably half that. Um, but if they bought it for 330 and it was shipped to the U.S., a box this big by itself to the U.S. is roughly 50 to 60 bucks. So he's probably into it for about 380 as well whoever bought it if they were in the u.s um i'm glad i didn't buy it because i was just offered one donated to the channel a kit and you will see that one come in so i'm excited that jason is going to be able to get this one um and i'm excited that now i have one coming in it was offered to me it was an unbelievable gesture um you'll see a video on it coming up where i'll compare the two um up close and then this one is actually going to get built on the show for Jason because Jason has um, some physical issues with assembling cars. I don't want to get into it, but I told him that I would build the car on the channel. I'm going to keep this body set and I'm going to give him, uh, I ha you'll see in that video, I have a Masami livery body and wing that's already painted and all the rainbow and everything is done in airbrush paint. So... It'll be a Masami livery car, but professionally painted. And that's what Jason wants in his collection. So I'm going to keep the body and wing for when I get my car. And then potentially we will potentially run it at least on my track um, along with the 94. So yes, I'm putting my foot in my mouth. I said I wouldn't run one i said i wouldn't buy one i did buy one i've got one coming as a donation i am gonna run it so everything that i said and i was kind of an ass in the video i apologize if any of you are offended is all total garbage and yes i have the first yokomo riri essentially coming which is cool as hell <laughs> For those of you that don't do YouTube, this is what happens, right? You get caught in the moment. Um, you're doing an unboxing. You start to have this feeling. You're very transparent and honest in how you present yourself on camera. And then two weeks later, everything that you said goes out the window. And you're thinking to yourself, I'm going to look like a total idiot when I do an unboxing video and pull that kid out because I was... I was caught up in the fact that the UK was getting pounded and I was putting it on Yokomo and that, well, that's not right. So I apologize to Yokomo and I apologize to you guys if you were offended by it in any way, shape or form. The car is awesome. Everybody that bought one, I think probably are, they're getting their money's worth short of anyone who's in a country like the UK where the country pounds them with import tax and it just inflates the price. It's not your fault. It totally sucks, and I do really feel bad for you guys. Uh, it's not right, to be completely honest. At the same token, it is what it is. What can you do? Um, yeah. So this that's the end of this box. Enough waffle. I'm going to get this all cleaned up, and I'll bring you back for a closing. So that's going to do it for this episode of RC Icons. The last of the vacation buys. One thing that I didn't show you that I did buy on vacation, but not from Bai, and I don't know that you're aware of this, but the 60th mid prototype, Kyosho is doing body sets. And I said in the 60th video that I liked that the body was a little bit different on the 60th. So I ended up buying two. Comes with the decals. It's a full body set. Uh, is the wing in there? I don't believe it comes with the wing. Which seems a little bit 
dumb. You think that if you were getting the body set, you'd get the wing too, but that's not necessarily true because Tamiya sells buggy wings separate from the bodies as well. Um, so yeah, I, I Kyosho America had them in stock. I ended up picking up two because if I just do decide to run it and I jack the body up, I'll have some more of those bodies. That and with it being a limited edition, um, we have no clue how many they made. Who knows how long the body set will be available. I love the green and blue, to be honest. I may do that livery if I do a runner mid, which I probably will. I'll probably still do that livery on the runner mid as well. Um, I have not seen them selling the green wheels, although the green wheels are available. I believe JC Racing has them um, in 2.2. In green so I could build up a mid put 2.2 rubber on it with the green JC racing wheels and do the green paint with the blue decals um, that's kind of what's going on in my head so yeah I did source two body kit body kits um, for the prototype 60th anniversary edition and then as far as by uh, yeah, Jason's got the 870, which is cool as hell. I'm looking forward to building it for him. He wants the alloy bulkheads, and I <laughs> I had messaged him back. I'm like, I think it comes with alloy bulkheads. For some reason, I thought the bulkheads came alloy, but I believe they're plastic. And I thought the original came in magnesium. Um, so that's a little bit of a letdown, to be honest. If the original... Now, I'm not knower of all things Yokomo by any stretch I'm trying to look around the box I'm looking at my original I can't I think it has magnesium bulkheads in the original but they came plastic in the Riri they are doing an alloy option but it's super hard to find they're just selling as soon as they're making them so um, that may be something he's gonna have to do on his own I'm not sure um, but yeah F1 craziness while I was away this whole F1 thing started, I remember doing my first collection videos a year and a half, and I don't mean to waffle like crazy, but I was talking about how I didn't know anything about F1, and I thought that they were awesome cars, but I had no F1 in my collection. Boy, has that changed. It started with an F201 four-wheel drive car, which is crazy, because I don't think any F1 cars were really four-wheel drive, but I have to have at least 10 or 12 bodies at least um and at least six kits at this point um i can't even name them uh, i've got so many so yeah it's gotten a little bit crazy uh, i they did so many of them I, I can't not be looking at them i'm just enthralled in it um so it is what it is got a couple of new ones got a couple of old ones got another kit whether it'll get built or not i'm not sure if you're not already a subscriber, I'd ask you to consider subscribing so you don't miss Jason's Yokomo build as well as mine when it gets here. Um, as well as everything else that needs to be done. And uh, so yeah, I would encourage you to subscribe to support the channel. Uh, let me know what you think of not only this box, but the three all together. Um, as far as one week away, I went a little bit crazy which is kind of what I always do. Too much time on my hands doing things like that. Along with that, I bought that clear 6.4 at K&K. &K. Holy smokes. I try not to even think about it. Um, so, yeah, thumbs up, thumbs down. Until next time, we'll see you soon. Thanks.